Hi there, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to power our small Arduino devices or Arduino-like devices. Of course, usually you just hook it up to USB and that's it. But what if you want to bring it somewhere else? What if you want to leave this somewhere and just leave it running while you're not there? What if you need to run <coughs> it without a computer? What then? You just hook it up to mains voltage? I don't think so. <coughs> Let's, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, coffee, right. Oh yeah, much better. Let's switch cam, here we go. We have the Arduino, it can take voltage through the USB and it will. By default it pulls 5 volts through the USB. If you don't have USB available, you can also hook it up to power. Right here using some sort of power jack. This is supposed to be able to handle 12 volts. I have never supplied it with 12 volts, so I don't know. You can also supply it with power right here. It says VIN, it means voltage in. This one I'm very careful about how I supply it. Usually only very low voltages. So let's try it. Of course we have our USB, no fun in that. Let's try it with uh, this one. This is a 9 volt battery <coughs> with a jack on the end. Hook it up. Yes, it works fine. You can see there's a light on. It does something. Yeah. Then you can also get uh, battery packs, different kinds of battery packs. Got one right here. Something like this. <coughs> And these are all running like this, so it starts here and then it goes something like that. So, if you wanted to calculate the power, you can see it right here. This one is 1.5 battery. So it's 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. That's a <coughs> 3, 6, something like that. If we measure the power, it should be reasonable. Let's do that. We're going to take our voltmeter, set it to voltages. If you're using a old voltmeter, then you have numbers, set it on volts, DC and 20. The numbers should say 20. Don't mind the numbers right now, they're just my fingers, butter fingers everywhere. So, I'm just going to, you can see on the top there's these two, I'm going to jam the round right in there and the red one in there and it's 6.17 so that's fine that's okay we got power now we're going to hook it up to this so first we're going to take the black wire or the negative if you have reversed all your batteries then it's uh, of course the other way around and put it in the one called GIND ground. Going to take the red one, put it in the last one called voltage in. And you can see even before I, I, I'm not having it all rain, I'm just, there we go, it's already running. <coughs> and it's running smooth. Now alternatively, if you wanted to, you can hook it up to a mains voltage. But uh, if you do that, you need a transformer to transform your local voltage down to something like 12 volts before you put it into your device or lower of course <clears throat> or if you're smart you can use a power supply from a old stationary computer like a ATX uh, stationary computer that's the fact of the size of it right it's usually a box a bit smaller than this uh, that has a lot of wires coming out of it runs into your motherboard graphics card etc some of these wires are 12 volts I have a lamp right here. You saw the flicker? That's actually directly through my computer recording this. I'm pulling 12 volts to a lamp. And that's no problem because the power supply in my computer is a 1 kilowatt power supply. <laughs> and it's able to supply, I think it's 4 or 8 amps. So running a small lamp through my computer, no problem. The problem can be the way you connect it up to the power supply. Sure, the devices or the components can easily handle the voltages, 
but the wires and the connectors may not be able to handle the voltages. <coughs> if you don't have access to a power supply, you most likely, well, this is a European plug, but uh, wherever you live, plugs look different, but I'm sure you have these transformers from old computers or gaming consoles or all sorts of things. And maybe you don't have the device, but you have the power supply. That's cool. We can use this. Let's check this one out. <clears throat> yeah, let's check it out. I said, there we go. So here we have it. What's important to us is our mains voltage. You can see it's up there. It's very hard. This webcam is shit. But yeah, it says uh, 220 to 240 volts AC, 50 hertz. That's European, Denmark. Output 12 volt DC, 1000 milliamps. Perfect. 12 volts. <coughs> 12 volts is uh, exactly what we could use for our Arduino. And this one actually has a plug that fits in the Arduino. But considering this one has a fake CE sticker on it. I'm not sure I'm going to hook this up to my small devices before I have tested it. Instead of testing it, I'm just going to use it, but I'm going to put something between this and my devices. Let's hook it up to main voltage. There we go. Now power is on. I have made this contraption on a piece of wood. Yeah, it's not conductive wood, you know. <clears throat> I got a small buck converter right here. This part over here is just some capacitors where I divide the voltages. The amp meter at the top. What's important is that I'm getting voltage in and as you can see right now I'm putting 5 volts out to this cable right here. Well it's not on but if I turn this switch you can see there's a small light going on meaning I'm outputting power. But when I click this button, I'm going to see the voltage input. So if you remember the transformer I just plugged in, it's running into here. It says output 12 volts. Let's see. Nope. 14.7 actually. It's more like 50 volts. 15, sorry. 15 volts. I'm not sure my Arduino will be able to handle 15 volts. But I don't know. I haven't tried, but I'm not going to try. I just know that 15 volts might be too much. I know I can only deliver 1000 milliamps because that's the limit of the power supply. Or at least it says. I'm not going to test it right now. But this is a problem. Luckily, using this device, I can turn up and down my voltages. So I can put in a screw and I can regulate my voltage on the fly, whatever I need. This part over here, just ignore that. It's just because I'm pulling out 5 volts constantly to the small board here, in case I need separate 5 volts for supplying small components I'm building on the side. So that's 4 ways today how to power your Arduino. Of course we'll be using them whenever we are going to build some components in the future. But I'll see you in the next video. The next video is going to be about resistors and LEDs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.